So today we'll be looking at this amplifier and I got this off Facebook Marketplace. And I've had this for about, I don't know, two, three weeks. Only reason I got it is because I've never heard of this brand before. Select by Cupix. So I saw this on Facebook Marketplace like I mentioned. And I was just kind of scrolling by and I saw it for real cheap. Maybe the color scheme that they decided to use um, made me stop and double, double look at it. Again, the name stood out since I've never heard of it. And then it looked like a 90s amplifier. So I decided to purchase it, especially for the price that I paid for it. So let's take a look at the amp. And towards the end, I will show you guys what it sounds like. So here's the face. Now this unit is very heavy. Like I said, I think it's a 90s amplifier or older, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's a 90s amp. Now looking at this very closely, right here, if you look closely, where it says 2 ohm stability and 690 watts, if you look at it at an angle, right underneath that white print, it says 2 ohm stability, and right next to it, it says 360 watts under that white print. Maybe they decided to use the same case and put different parts inside, or just give it a bigger number to help sales. I thought that was kind of funny once I got it home and started looking at it. Once I got it home, I started kind of looking more to see if I can find any information on this brand, and I did. And I came up with this page, which I believe is some information from the amplifier that I have. It says year 1998, and if I scroll down a little bit, RMS power 130 times two at four ohm. I wish they put a picture in here of the amplifier, but they don't. But there is a model number, so maybe this information is correct. And I tried looking around to see if I can see any other amplifiers, and I did. And I did notice that they made a gooseneck EQ. And I remember uh, seeing something similar back in the day through uh, Pyramid. They made something similar. So I started poking around with the EQ and I found this. I remember seeing something like this in the past that Pyramid made, and when I clicked on this, I did notice this seller, uh, under brand, he had mentioned Pyramid. So that made sense to me, because I remember seeing something similar back in the day. So here's just another picture of that EQ, it looks very nice. I did notice that Qpix also makes residential amplifiers, and for example on this picture here, it also says USA next to Qpix. So maybe Qpix was a quality company, maybe I just got lucky and found one for real cheap. And I've already hooked this thing up to make sure it works and it sounds all right. So hopefully maybe you guys have seen this amplifier or have had it and can let me know something about it. Again, there isn't much online. Any kind of information would be great, but uh, yeah, let's keep looking at this amplifier. Okay, so on the right side of the amplifier, we have the power connections. So this is your positive, remote, negative, and here's your fuses. 225 amp fuses and here's your speaker connections. Now this amp is bridgeable as labeled right there That's your positive That's your negative in bridge mode and when hooking this up in stereo mode That is your left negative left positive right negative right positive All right, so that's this side of the amplifier. All right, so here's this side of the amplifier That's labeled out two, out one input All right that's labeled out to with a crossover frequency of 150 hertz to 5k out one 50 hertz to 2k sub in I'm trying to show you guys as best as I can 50 hertz to 250 hertz all right there's your level dial your subwoofer switch on and off your power LED, which is red for good, and when it goes into protect, that LED turns uh, green. Uh, I remember back in the day, 
through the 90s, a lot of these amplifiers came with these uh, gold-plated ends on the RCAs and the screws, as you saw on the other side here. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of a cool-looking amplifier. So let's look at the bottom. So here's the bottom. Here's a serial number. If any of you guys know how to get any information off of that, that would be great. Hopefully you guys can see it. Okay. So I'm going to open this up so you guys can see the guts. Okay, you guys ready for this? Here we go. Wow, not bad. This is not a bad looking amplifier on the inside. I don't know much about this stuff. But it seems to be like, uh, like a decent board. Doesn't look cheap at all. But I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking at. Now nothing looks burnt or like it's been through a lot of heat or anything. I'm not sure if these are swollen or not, but they don't seem like they're spongy. Kind of surprised it looks like so. It looks like a quality piece to me. Very nice. Again, I wish I knew more about this amplifier and hopefully one of you guys knows more or has had this amplifier or bought it and can tell or share some history but i don't see any name on the board or anything i'm not sure if you guys can see that but there's a name on that i don't see any dates anywhere Well, there you guys go. That's the gut shot on this amplifier. I'm happy I opened it up because I wasn't sure what this was going to look like inside. And I'm kind of happy that uh, that it looks like it does because it looks to me like a decent amplifier. So let me close this up. And then what I'm going to do is put it on the test bench and see what it sounds like. I'll be right back. So I got this wired up. Red light, ready to go. Now it's wired up in stereo mode and each channel has a two-ohm load. So we're going to try this first and then I'm going to try to uh, bridge the amplifier and give it a two-ohm load that way. So, so let's hear what this sounds like. I got a song lined up and it's Space Age Hustle. It's a YouTube approved song. Here we go.
actually doing pretty good. Like I said, it's not the most powerful thing, but it does, uh, it does a decent job. It pushes those 12s pretty good. It gets them moving pretty good. I'm not sure if you guys are able to see that through the camera, but they're flexing pretty good. They're flexing hard enough to move the box. I'm not sure if you guys can see that on camera, but it's starting to rotate. So let's try another song. I'm gonna get that set up and I'll be right back. Okay, got one more song for you guys. And it's, I think it's called the White Fish Salad and it's by Latasha. Again, another YouTube approved song. So let's give this a try. Okay, there's one more test I want to do, and that's run this in two ohm bridge. So let's do that next. Let me uh, let me take care of that off camera, and I'll be right back. So I got these wired up. It's not in the two ohm load bridge like I was trying to achieve, and that's only because these are single two ohm. Um, so these are wired at four ohm at the moment, but it is bridged. And uh, let's give this a listen. And again, the same song, Whitefish Salad by Latasha. So here we go.
really pushing those subs. Um, it actually sounds better and it's at a higher ohm. So I'm sure it's pushing less wattage, but for whatever reason, it sounds a lot better. Um, maybe not a lot better, but it sounds better. impressive to me I'm gonna try one more thing I'm gonna try to wire this down to one ohm and see if it if it will take it I highly doubt it will but we'll try it so I'll be right back I got this wired down to one ohm so that's maybe a good sign that it's gonna play we'll see how this goes okay let's give this a try Okay, hear them going. good and there you guys see it I went into protection mode let me try to reset this and see if it comes back to life so I repowered the amp she came back to life it's playing just fine now um, so she doesn't like 1 ohm but that's okay because it clearly tells you 2 ohm stable so I don't know about this 690 watt but I will tell you what at 1 ohm at a low volume, it did sound pretty stout. Um, overall, I like this amp. So I just want to thank everyone for watching. And I'll see you guys on the next one.